In animation, there are certain names you come across whose work is immediately striking and memorable. They create images that stay in your memory forever and enter the public subconscious. One of the most notable artists to leave her imprint on animation, the work produced by Walt Disney in particular, is Mary Blair. Even if the name does not ring a bell, you certainly know her artwork if you've consumed enough classic Disney in your lifetime. Usually, during that time at Disney, women were commonly assigned to ink and paint, responsible for the mundane task of coloring the animation cells. However, Mary Blair managed to move above the ranks and provide concept art for their various animated films, starting with Dumbo in 1941. Elements of her artwork found themselves in the tree right to Bahia in The Three Caballeros, the trees in Johnny Appleseed, and the Once Upon a Wintertime segment in Melody Time. However, her big break came in the 1950s, when Walt Disney and the directors and artists were so impressed with her work that her concepts found themselves being integrated more and more into the finished film. Her influence was first felt in Cinderella, with the background artists working hard to utilize her colors and line work in the production design. Looking at her concept art, it's impressive how many of her ideas were used in the movie. The use of lighting was especially excellent in her art, and the directors did a fantastic job of transferring that to the final animation. Cinderella was a big deal and very important film for Disney, and I think Mary Blair's contributions played a key role in its success. When it came time for the Disney artists to adapt Alice in Wonderland, they had big shoes to fill, as John Neal's illustrations were fairly iconic and so closely matched the original books. Leave it to Mary Blair to leave her own personal imprint on this story and leave everyone impressed. Looking over the concept art, that is all 100% Mary Blair, being allowed to let loose and bring her own style to Lewis Carroll's world and characters. Watching the final movie, it's hard not to take one's eyes off the vibrancy of the colors and imagery, whether it's the amazing marching of the playing card guards or the way the different creatures of Wonderland appear to Alice, the whole film is stunning to watch unfold. When I was younger, I was continually overjoyed by the tea party scene, and still am. That was definitely Blair embracing her more manic side, as she showed the wild and strangely shaped tables and teapots of the Mad Hatter and Marge Hare's crazy parties. You can tell how much Walt Disney and the team of animators were indebted to Mary Blair, how much they preserved her conceptual art in the final animation and backgrounds on this film. While not quite as noticeable as in Alice in Wonderland, she also did plenty of design work on Peter Pan. While the Disney artist selected for more straightforward approach to the animation, her conceptual work is still quite striking. Mary Blair seemed to have a particular fondness for the mermaids, as most of her drawings for Peter Pan that exist out there are focused on the mermaids and their grotto. It wasn't just the features she worked on either. Her designs and colors were applied on the short Susie, the little blue coop, but I've always had a fondness for the little house, which she also worked on. Even though the final design was ultimately more Disney-fied, she began the process of giving warmth to this small house, which made the short that much better. It's no surprise that her work at Disney then got her hired to illustrate a lot of the little golden books, and that when those charming little storybooks are remembered today, it's mostly due to Blair's work on them. Even when artists do new spins on the little golden books, it's Blair they take their main inspiration from. However, certainly her most iconic work came when Walt Disney asked her to provide the designs for what would be one of his most famous rides. None other than It's a Small World. Whether you love the main song or don't want to hear another bar of it, it's hard to deny the incredible contribution Blair made to the project. Everything from the building's design to the many children of the world were taken from Blair's drawing pad and brought to light by the talented Imagineers at Disney. And, when they update the ride to include the Disney characters, even change it up for the holidays, they still honor Blair's illustrations, and the new animatronics feel like her interpreting the animated characters. And even many years later, her influence is still felt in today's animated features. I certainly cannot help but think of Mary Blair upon watching the likes of Frozen and Cloudy with a Chance Meatballs 2. She's certainly a Disney legend deserving of that status, for all she contributed to the studio and animation as a whole. See you next time.